Have you ever seen this Zelda character who turned into a Mario mainstay? Or what about this alternate design for Link that ended up being removed from the Zelda series? Or how about the Zelda character who has remained super popular despite not appearing in any mainline games for 25 years? Well, today we're going to be talking about some of the Zelda characters who completely vanished from the series, starting with Ganon's parents, Twin Rova. For being the surrogate parents of the main antagonist of almost every Zelda game, these characters are very underrated. Known separately as Kotake and Kaun, these witches debuted in Ocarina of Time where Link has to fight them to rescue Naburu. But things take a bizarre turn in Majora's Mask when Twin Rova goes from a prominent arch nemesis to Link to simple shopkeepers that actually help him in stopping Majora. Then, in the Oracle of Ages and Seasons games, they're once again enemies with Link, being prominent antagonists in both games. These guys switch teams more than Volkswagen. Sadly, since this appearance in 2001, Twin Rova has pretty much disappeared from the Zelda franchise. Tears of the Kingdom did feature them briefly briefly in a memory cutscene, but they weren't really acknowledged. So much wasted potential. But now let's switch things up a little bit with Tingle. That's a weird name, right? Tingle was first introduced in Majora's Mask, and he's a full-grown man that dresses as a fairy. That's his entire character. But despite his goofy, harmless nature, Bids immediately began trashing this character at every opportunity they got. The poor guy! But since all publicity is good publicity in the eyes of Nintendo, Tingle was included in a good amount of future Zelda titles. He even got not one, not two, but three spin-off titles for the Nintendo DS that sold decently well in Japan. And then... Oh, Tingle disappeared from mainline Zelda. He's been mentioned here and there, but apart from in Hyrule Warriors, Tingle's been absent from the Zelda series. But if you think those characters are insane, then just wait for all the other obscure characters in this video. Like the original antagonist of Zelda before Ganon, this insane orb with a weird face on it, and so much more. But for now, let's take a look at a Zelda character who was last seen in a Mario game. That character is the Running Man. As the name implies, the Running Man appeared in multiple Zelda titles and did a whole lot of running in them. After these appearances though, Running Man retired from the Zelda series. Then he ran on down to Isle Delfino and decided to challenge Mario to some races in Super Mario Sunshine under a new name, that being Piantissimo. What's more, Piantissimo was last seen wielding the magic paintbrush, a device that can be used to alter your appearance. In fact, many fans speculate that he transformed into Nabbit since both like to run. That is absolutely insane. Now whether or not that last bit is canon, we don't know for sure, but I like to think it is because because that would be such an incredible turn of events. Now, we're changing gears a little bit with a lesser known character that was removed from Ocarina of Time. This character's model was simply named Object Human, and she appeared in early Nintendo Power screenshots of the game. When asked about in interviews with the developers, this character quickly gained notoriety with fans, who began nicknaming her Aria. Unfortunately, developers felt that Aria had a style too similar to Super Mario 64, and they scrapped her from the Zelda series for good. This earned Aria the title of the Lost Maiden of Hyrule, among hardcore fans. Now, if you've played any amount of Zelda, you've probably seen your fair share of fairies. But have you ever heard of the scrapped reconnaissance fairy from Legend of Zelda Link to the Past? According to series creator Shigeru Miyamoto, Link to the Past was being developed as a JRPG-style game, where you have a whole party of heroes rather than just Link alone. One of the characters Miyamoto mentions when discussing this was a, quote, girl who looked like a little fairy and whose role consisted of reconnaissance. But since Link to the Past ended up changing directions drastically, this fairy never saw the light of day. Maybe that's for the better though. But what about a Zelda character who appeared in just a single mainline game yet remains super popular to this day in a completely different series? In Ocarina of Time, Princess Zelda disguises herself as a Sheikah male known simply as Sheep. While you may recognize this character instantly, it's probably not from their time in Zelda. Rather, you probably know Sheik from the Super Smash Bros. series, where they have appeared in every single game since Melee. But despite becoming a mainstay in Smash, Sheik has literally disappeared from the mainline Zelda series ever since the their first appearance. At this point, can you even call this a Zelda character if they've been missing for 25 years? Let's switch things up a little bit now with an unused character from Twilight Princess simply known as Armos. This massive humanoid critter was supposedly an earlier idea for the Guardians of the Sacred Grove. Their main form of attack would have been to smack Link with their massive hands. But for one reason or another, developers decided that Armos weren't quite up to par, and they got the boot, or should I say the arm, and as such they never returned. On a bit of a sillier note, there was was 
also this unused model of a fish in Twilight Princess, and it was modeled in the Wind Waker style. Now, you may be thinking that this is just a silly old fish, but for all we know, this little guy could hold the secrets of the universe. We'll never know for sure though, as he was cut during development. Now, if you've played any amount of Skyward Sword, then you probably have heard of this next character. I am of course talking about Groose. Groose is a frenemy to Link for a good deal of the game simply due to the fact that this man was down bad for Zelda. Groose appeared frequently throughout the entirety of Skyward Sword, with wacky antics ensuing almost every time. But despite being jealous of Link's relationship with Zelda, he was still a pretty good ally. Overall, Groose provided some great comic relief throughout Skyward Sword, making him loved by fans. Which is why ever since Skyward Sword, Groose has never come back? What? Come on, Nintendo, we need some more Legend of Groose. Things get super wild with this next character though, as it literally had no reason to exist and makes no sense. So looking into the unused characters of Wind Waker, nothing seemed that interesting at first. Until I saw this. Now, I don't know what kind of dank sh the developers of this game were smoking to have created this orb of a man, but my god is it hilarious. Put yourself into a developer's perspective for a second and try to decipher a single reason for this to be in the files of the game. Why does this exist? On a less interesting note, this multicolored bird was also found in the files of the game, but that's nowhere near as insane as this next character. That's right, it's time for the original antagonist of Hyrule, a character who terrorized the realm for hundreds of years before Ganondorf was even born, Vati. Vati has appeared in the Zelda series in the Minish Cap, Four Swords, and Four Swords Adventure, where he's a formidable foe to Link. But according to the book Hyrule Historia, it's revealed that he was the original baddie in Hyrule. Apparently, he's even as powerful as Ganon. But despite his pretty infamous reputation, Vati hasn't appeared in any Zelda game for over 15 years. Fell off pretty hard, I guess. All right, it's time to end things off with a character that you'd never expect to vanish. Link? Okay, let me explain. So with every Zelda game, there's typically a unique mechanic introduced. In the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, that just so happened to be time travel. This allows us to switch between a young version of Link and a more adult version of Link. Despite these technically being the same character, adult Link and young Link are often portrayed as two separate entities. And unfortunately for the adult counterpart, he was never to see the light of day after this. He was originally going to be included in Majora's Mask as an alternate mask form for Link, but was cut for unknown reasons. Meaning that by technicality, there is in fact a version of Link that vanished from the Zelda series. Then again, I know less about Zelda than a f***ing crouton, so this could all be wrong. Bye!